our new program launching in September 2022, so next September, the new program in creative and cultural industries. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and share screen. Uh, my name, by the way, is Dr. Emily Mark Fitzgerald, and I'm an associate professor and head of the School of Art History and Cultural Policy, and I'm one of the people who have been involved in setting up this new program at UCD. Um, my contact details are here on the first slide, and they're also going to be at the end. So just in case folks have any questions, because this is a really new program for us here at UCD, and so there might not be too much information about it online, but I'm happy to answer you know, any queries that folks may have, both at the end of today and also subsequently by email. So what is this? What is this new program all about? Well, what we're looking for are folks who are interested in being thinkers, makers, and doers for the next four years with us here at UCD. We're looking for folks who have an interest in transforming and shaping the world of creative work. What we're offering you is four years of a rigorous program of study, but one which is very much supported in helping you to also develop your own creative voice. What we're hoping to do then is by the end of this four years, when you graduate as a cultural entrepreneur or a producer, or a creative practitioner, you're going to be ready equipped with skills that are going to be feeding into the creative and cultural industries. But perhaps more importantly, we want this to be a space of experimentation for you where you'll also be able to imagine new ways of working and producing creatively that perhaps haven't even yet been uh, invented or identified yet. So, Again, just in a nutshell, what's it all about? It's a new four-year BA program. And what it looks to do is blend the breadth and the richness of creative arts and humanities subjects that you can study here in the College of Arts and Humanities with also modules in organizational uh, structures and in innovation in digital skills and also management and training, which are going to be preparing you for a wide diversity of creative fields. And what you're going to be doing then is studying and working alongside a cohort of fellow students, of world-class scholars, and also creative mentors in a tight-knit intensive unit. And while you're here for these four years, you'll also be utilizing our bespoke digital and creative infrastructure to explore new futures of creative work. And I'm gonna explain what some of those are in just a moment. It's important to note too that for this particular uh, new program, your assessments are going to go beyond essay writing and exams. You'll do some of those, but you're also going to be making a creative project work, podcasts, videos, digital storytelling, and you're going to be graduating with a portfolio that can demonstrate your skills, your knowledge, and most importantly, your creative vision. So as I mentioned, we're new, uh, but this is a program which involves uh, a great deal of collaboration, uh, both internal at UCD, but also external as well. It involves the participation of six schools across the university and three different colleges. So it's really exciting. It's, it's very unique in terms of the kinds of programs that we offer here at UCD. It's important to note too, that we're also part of and supported by the Creative Futures Academy. Now the Creative Futures Academy is a brand new initiative that's been funded for 10 million euro by the ACA. And it's a collaboration between UCD, NCAD and IEDT. And this particular program, the BA in Creative and Cultural Industries is one of UCD's flagship contributions to this initiative. And I've put the URL there down at the bottom. You can explore mo more programs and the, the ethos of the Creative Futures Academy, which has really just uh, launched in the last number of months. So there's this enormous supportive infrastructure in, in essence around this new program at the university. So who's it for? And where might you wanna go when you finish a program like this? These are the kinds of industries and creative fields that we are looking to support and, and build your way towards. So whether that's radio, writing and producing radio programs, also looking at existing and also emerging platforms um, for broadcasting, Festivals, which is one of the biggest cultural sectors uh, in Ireland and, of course, internationally as well. So creating cultural experiences and also, of course, stimulating cultural tourism. If you're interested in working in galleries and museums as educators, uh, ed uh, uh, curators and other forms of professionals, theater and performance, producing new plays, new immersive dramatic experiences for audiences. If you're interested in working in television and film through writing and producing or editing and also, again, shaping the future of the media industry, which is changing all the time. You might be interested in policy, say, for example, working for local government or national government in terms of shaping uh, the processes and structures that support creative work. 
or you might be interested in creative enterprise. If you're interested in innovating a new kind of cultural business or also helping to bring new concepts to market. And finally, communications, marketing and advertising in terms of sharing the message of different forms of creative expression and production and also stimulating economic growth. This is also perhaps a program that would help you reach those ambitions. So in a nutshell, what's the ethos of the program? It's really about building a deep knowledge, historical and contemporary, of the creative and cultural industries how the visual arts, music, museums, theater, music, festivals, television, film, digital platforms, how all of these are produced and managed in global contexts. And so this deep kind of subject knowledge is then married with really robust skills in financial management and project production, in cultural policy, reflective practice, intellectual property and copyright law, and also emerging digital technologies. So you might then think, okay, well, what's this going to look like on a day-to-day -day basis at UCD? Well, our base for this program is going to be the Newman Creative Hub. And this is a purpose-built space, which is in development right now in the Newman building. And this is going to be a new space for recording, editing, and we'll have also production facilities that's scheduled to open in late 2022. Most of the classes are going to take place on UCD's campus, but we'll also have some classes that take place uh, in locations like the Museum of Literature, which is on St. Stephen's Green in Newman House, and also in studios and cultural spaces across the city. The kinds of classes you'll be taking include lectures and seminars, but also modules which involve creative immersion and which emphasize entrepreneurial skills, particularly in digital technology. And your program is going to also include regular guided visits to performances, exhibitions and festivals, helping to both build your professional network and also increase your knowledge of creative practice as it's being you know, activated and, and created in Ireland right now. So just to give you an idea of some of this creative infrastructure that I referred to at UCD, um, sometimes folks outside the university aren't aware of the density of what we actually have to work with here at UCD, which is, of course, the largest university in Ireland. And this is something which has been prioritized by our president and the university and that we're going to be building on in the next number of years. So at present, we have uh, two black box studios and theaters, one which is existing and one which is going to be opening, as I mentioned, uh, next year. We have two cinemas. We have a new digital editing suite. We have the Parody Artist in Residence Studios, which are in, located over in the UCD Sciences Building, where we have visual artists on site. Um, we have a number of performance and rehearsal uh, spaces for the performing ensembles, which Kieran was just talking about uh, during the last session. And we also have a campus radio station, a dance studio. We have lots I didn't even have time to kind of put on this slide. Um, but these are the types of facilities that you will be able to work with uh, as in terms of being part of this program. So who are the people that you're going to be working with as part of this program? Well, to begin with, you're going to be joining a cohort of fellow aspiring creatives, what we're calling the CCI crew. These are the, your fellow students that you'll be studying and collaborating with over the four years that you'll be here at UCD. In addition to that, we have our industry mentors, and I'll show you um, some examples of some of these folks in a minute. But these are folks who are drawn from UCD's creative fellows, our artist in residence program, and also the wider Creative Futures Academy network. And these are folks who are going to be there to guide and advise you as you're developing your creative ambitions and also building that professional network. You'll be taking courses, of course, from our globally renowned academics across the arts, social sciences, law, information and communication technology and business. And finally, of course, we have our vibrant student-led cultural activities. Every night of the week during term time, you can pretty much count there's something going on on campus. And these include the performing arts ensembles and student societies and drama, debating, music, visual arts, et cetera. So just to expand a little bit on who some of our uh, creative or, or our industry mentors are, and you are going to be matched with some of these folks uh, on an individual basis for them to provide advice and information for you. So these include uh, people who you can see here uh, in the photograph. Uh, there's Paul Brady, the musician, um, who's, of course, very well known to lots of people. Um, Oriel Cullen, who's curator of fashion and textiles at the V&A. Barbara Dawson, who's director of the Hugh Lane Gallery. Uh, Moya Daugherty, who is a producer and chair of RTE. She's also well known for being the person who uh, uh, was one of the original founders of Riverdance. Um, Grania Humphreys, who's director of the Dublin International 
Film Festival, uh, Neil Jordan, the well-known filmmaker and writer, and Colm Jabin, the writer and novelist. So this is just a sampling of our current creative fellows here at the university. We also have three folks who have just been uh, appointed to these positions of artist in residence here at the College of Arts and Humanities, including Donald Lenny, the traditional musician and composer, uh, Jenny Jennings, who's a cultural producer behind the popular phenomenon of This Is Pop Baby, and also has worked at Dublin Fringe Festival and the Dublin Gaze Film Festival, and Mark O'Halloran, who's perhaps best known for as an, as an actor and screenwriter for his film Adam and Paul, and he's also currently adapting Sally Rooney's Conversation with Friends. And then in terms of some of the academic staff who are here um, at the university, um, just to say to, uh, as well, Emer, unfortunately, I can't look at the chat messages. So if anything is urgent, just, just please unmute yourself and let me know. Um, but to give you an idea of who some of the academic staff are, we have folks like Paul Halferty, who you see here from English Drama and Film. Um, Paul is a theater history and queer theater and performance studies scholar. And some of the modules that he teaches on that will be part of this program are music, film, and drama, making, doing, interpreting, and also staging performance. Um, Annette Clancy, who's from my school, specializes in organizational behavior and emotions. And Annette teaches on modules like intro to the business of culture and managing culture, minding your own business. Again, two modules which are part of this new program. Um, Eugenia, who you see there from Information and Communication Studies, focuses on digital and um, social media, um, platform governance, social justice. She looks at things like hate speech and racism and misogyny in online fora. And she teaches the modules Gender, Race and Media and Media in Society. And then finally, Nick Pillai, who's a specialist in jazz and broadcasting, particularly the BBC. He's actually over in RTE right now with a group of UCD students, um, and he also works in television history. And he's going to be teaching on writing for screen and contributing to our module, Meet the Makers, Meet the Industry. Now, let's go then and move quickly to, to some of the... Um, uh, well, first, sorry, before I get ahead of myself, these are some of our, our wider industry partners, and these are the organizations that are part of the Creative Futures Academy and that we're working with to develop this program. And it includes things like the Arts Council, the Design and Crafts Council of Ireland, RTE, Words Ireland, Screen Ireland, so all of the major arts uh, and, and cultural and creative industries organizations, uh, some of the big nationals are uh, very much involved in this program. So just to summarize some of the nuts and bolts, if you're wondering what this program is going to look like in terms of its mechanics, here's the structure. We have cores, options and electives, and then specialisms. So in terms of the cores, these are modules that are required of all students in, of this program, and they're going to be focused in creative and cultural industries in ICT, and some are academic and others are practice and skills based modules. And some are shared with other programs, but others have, are specific for this particular program. They have the prefix CCI in them. That's how you can tell. In terms of options and electives, there's more than 100 modules over the course of the four, year, four years that you'll be able to choose from, from across the humanities, from ICT, from business, so that you'll be able to shape and mold your degree. And we have academic advisors who will be in place to be able to advise you on module choices uh, for this. And then finally, from year two, you're going to be developing a specialism. So this is, in a sense, think of it as kind of like a minor, where you're going to be able to graduate and indicate that you have had a particular concentration of modules in one of these six themes. Art history and visual culture, English and creative writing, Irish and folklore, which includes Irish language broadcasting, music performance and production, media and communications, and stage and screen. So again, that gives you a sense of what the program looks like. On a year-to-year -year basis, this is how it plays out. In years one and two, you're going to be focusing on your top modules, and you'll be building 60 credits each year from this combination of cores, options, and electives. In year three, this is the kind of the gap year, if you like, um, of the program, where you have the option to do an internship in, for one trimester. You can do study abroad for one or two trimesters, or you can do coursework for one or two trimesters. And this is quite flexible. This is uh, common to all of our B Humanities degrees uh, that this is what the third year is for. And then in your fourth year, again, you'll be going into coursework, but also importantly, in your final year of this program, you'll be undertaking a capstone creative research project that you're gonna be doing in a team, and you're going to be evaluated by industry experts at the end of this. It's a really exciting kind of final big project that you'll be doing. And it might be something like a mini festival, a performance showcase, an exhibition, 
or a consultancy style project that you might deliver to an actual partner organization. You saw some of the, the list of some of those organizations a moment ago. So to give you an idea then, uh, as I'm kind of gearing towards the end, and then you'll be able to ask me any questions that you have, what stage one, year one is gonna look like. So what is September, 2022 gonna look like? Um, you will be taking these uh, six cores from in the, your first year, and you can see them here. The CCI are the new modules, which have been added and created especially for this program. The first, the landscape of cultural work, managing culture one, introduction to the business of culture, this third one, meet the makers, meet the industry, which is about going out into different workplaces and studios and meeting creative uh, producers. Um, information, culture, or society and culture, which is an ICT module and information and social media. And then the final one, music, film and drama, making, doing and interpreting. So then everyone in, in the program will be taking all six of these modules across the year. And then in addition, you will have option modules you can choose from and electives. So to give you an idea of what some of these option modules are at level one, there's more than 25 that you can actually choose from. And I've just put a selection here so you can get a sense of the diversity uh, and the nature of the kinds of modules you can take as options in year one. So things like digital uh, judgment, accounting for non-business students, project management, um, art history modules like Dublin and its museums, art in the modern world, English modules, world literature, literary genre, Irish modules, introduction to folklore, ethnography of the everyday, music modules like writing about music and music, culture and society, and also performance modules. The Philharmonic Choir and the Symphony Orchestra are also options to you if you're coming from a, a music practice background. So as you can see, this is going to be a program that has a lot of students in it who are going to be coming from different art form perspectives. And really, this is one of the ambitions of the program is to bring those folks together who have creative ambitions, who have this drive and passion for working in, in the creative and cultural fields, and to have this be a space where you can uh, both develop your own creative voice and expression and also get that really rigorous grounding in management, in finance, in law, and all of these other aspects that will help you forge a successful career that's supported while you're here. So this, in a sense, is our values. This is what we want to instill in folks who are coming to be part of this new program that you will think, dream, and plan with integrity, but also with fearlessness. And this is very much going to be an equal space where we're inviting our students to come in and help shape the nature um, of this program. And we're really excited about the amount of, of resources and also input that we have uh, to be able to launch this in September of 2022. So that's the formal bit of, of now uh, done. Um, just there, as you can see, if anyone wants to jot it down, if you want to put down um, my contact details, you can. Uh, there's my email. Um, I'm also on Twitter. If you want to follow me on Twitter, there's my Twitter address. And I've also put down um, a, a careers blog, which um, I, I run, which is called artsmanagement.ie backstroke on jobs. So if you're interested, there's, it's, it's got just under 10,000 subscribers. And if you're interested in the kinds of careers that you can go into with a degree like this, that's an excellent sort of snapshot of those. But um, I'll stop sharing my screen now and I'm happy to take any questions uh, the folks have. Or I'll leave, I might leave it up for just a minute so that folks can write that down. But um, and Emer can let me know if there's any questions. So thanks very much. Thank you so much, Emily, for that overview of this exciting new course. Uh, we've got quite a few questions in. One question is around the assessment methods used. What is that going to be like in this course? Yeah, well, the assessment methods are going to vary depending on the nature of the module. So some of the modules that we have are your more traditional, you know, essays and exams. Um, some of the humanities subjects, for example, um, that you might take modules in Irish or art history will still have those more traditional methods of examination. But others of the modules, particularly the creative and cultural industries ones, there instead of writing an essay, you might be creating a podcast, you might be creating a zine, um, you could be uh, doing another kind of sort of digital storytelling um, assessment. So our, the CCI modules in particular are going to have very, very different kinds of assessment than you would find kind of elsewhere in the college or even in the university. And so many of them will be much more practice based and, and project based. And the idea, again, is that you want to, at the end of this degree, be able to have a portfolio and of demonstrable ways in which you've been able to kind of leverage your own um, creative concepts 
into real things. And so we've got all of this infrastructure, as I mentioned, in terms of the new uh, digital editing suite and some of the production facilities to enable you to be able to do that. And again, we will have specific technology training modules as well. If some of these kinds of software or equipment are new to you, we'll be uh, giving training sessions on that also. Elia is wondering, are there any specific entry requirements? Now, the, the general entry requirements are the same as the entry requirements to DN530. So we're part of DN530, and it's one of the pathways that you can choose. So that's really the only requirement. We don't have specific, um, you know, we're not a portfolio-based course. So again, you don't have to bring a portfolio uh, in terms of the point of application. But we really are looking for folks who are interested in engaging in creative uh, production while you are here at the university. So if all you want to do is write essays and do exams, this isn't probably the, the, the course for you. But if you want to really flex your creative muscles and also get to grips with and learn new kinds of technologies, this is a good choice. And will everyone on this course do an internship in third year? That's a good question. Uh, this is an option. You don't have to do an internship. Like with all of the, the DN 530s, you have the option to have a combination. So you can choose, for example, to do a semester in, or a trimester internship, trimester study abroad. You could decide that you want to just stay at UCD and do two trimesters of coursework. It's up to you. The point is that that third year is really, really flexible. Um, but we anticipate probably a lot of our students are going to want to do internships because this is a, a new program that's very much uh, focused on the creative and cultural industries. And we have an absolutely enormous network of people uh, in the creative and cultural industries already um, who we place students with in other programs. Um, and here at UCD, because we have such strong programs uh, in the creative arts, you know, nearly all of the major cultural organizations that I can even think of in Ireland have one of our graduates working in them. So we have a lot, when we rely very much on that alumni network as well to help get people into really interesting uh, internship opportunities. Will there be a lot of teamwork as part of this course? Yeah, that's a really good question, Emer. And, and the answer is yes. Um, and so this is very much, we're going to have quite a number of modules which are going to be based on working in small teams to realize specific projects. So for example, that could be something like a business plan for a new cultural startup. What does that look like? What do you do when you're trying to create a business plan that you're actually pitching either to investors or an organization to take on board? And those are the kinds of projects that we're going to be having folks in small teams working on. And this again would be part of the assessment that you'd be doing. And in some cases, we'll be bringing in folks from um, different organizations and industries to kind of act as like a dragon's den um, and give you feedback and actual, you know, the, the kind of feedback that they would give you if you were actually pitching that um, to an industry partner. James is wondering what size the class will be. Yeah, this a little bit is an unknown for us in some ways because this is a new program. So we're just having folks at the moment, obviously you're just applying through DN um, 5, uh, 530. So it's a little hard for us to predict um, at this point. Um, but in any case, we've, we've set it up so that the, the course itself is going, to, you're going to be in relatively small cohorts. If we get a larger number than we're anticipating, we'll be breaking people into sort of smaller cells. Um, but the idea is, is you're going to get a high level of sort of pastoral care and mentorship as well as part of this program. And one final question from Jamie around practical production type skills. What sort of skills will people pick up on this course? Yeah, well, that's really going to, some of it might vary depending on, on what people's predict, particular art form interests are. So for example, you know, as I mentioned, we're going to be doing quite a lot with broadcasting and podcasting. So if that's something that you're interested in, you know, we have quite extensive, you know, audio editing equipment here at the university. We're also going to be working with partners like RTE who are going to provide additional training if something like that, you know, was of interest. So learning how to use a soundboard, how to do digital editing of podcasts. Um, we also have um, film uh, equipment which is going to be coming in so we're going to be teaching some of the basics as well around um, creation of, of video and post-production editing and things like that also so those are some of the more kind of skills-based um, aspects um, in any case it's so it's quite a broad-based introduction and it's also the kind of thing that if you see yourself going into a future career in one of these more specific um, areas which will require you know sort of postgraduate training as many of them do that this is kind of the launch pad for you to try maybe a, diff a lot of different kinds of creative and, and cultural production uh, skills and try and gain them while you're here and then perhaps maybe go on to something more specialized when you're finished thank you so much emily and thanks to everyone for joining us